worked too hard to get here. I'm not going back. I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You've got to be able to stand up and say, I know that God has healed me. I don't care what my symptoms may be. I know that God has healed me. And somebody said, well, then I'll quit taking my medication. Oh, don't be stupid. Just because you're spiritual don't mean you have to be physically stupid. I take pills every day. But every time I take that pill, I say, I thank you, Father, that this pill is healing me by the blood of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. Somebody said, you know that the medication only does more harm than it does good. It's got as many side effects as it does healing. But I remember that the Bible says that I can drink a deadly poison. And it won't hurt me. So I can see with my spirit. Whenever I first had to start taking those pills, I felt sorry for myself. Every night, I, I don't like swallowing pills. As a matter of fact, until 2007, I chewed up any pill I took. I've got a friend here that does the same thing. It didn't matter whether it was an aspirin. You want something that'll make you speak in tongues? Chew up penicillin. <laughs> I'd mix it up with applesauce, but how many of you know applesauce does not cover a multitude of sins? And so whenever I first started having to take these pills, I had to take, you know, I'm blessed the fact that many years ago, people with, with this diagnosis had to take 10 or 12 pills a day. I take two pills a day, and I'm really happy about that. And so, but man, you can't chew these pills. They will, they don't do any good if you chew them. They, they, they've got to be absorbed through the body. And so whenever the doctor told me, you're going to have to swallow these pills every day. Oh, I felt sorry for myself. I thought, why don't I just eat a worm and die? <laughs> Lord, you brought me out of that coma. Now I'm going to have to take pills the rest of my life. And you know I can't take pills. And I heard the Lord say to me in a gentle voice, Shut up. <laughs> and so I was complaining to the doctor before I went home from the hospital. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I said, you know, I try to take them, but... You know, you have, how many of you do that? Whenever you take a pill, you catch yourself. Yeah. The doctor says you can't do that. That's not how pills go down. You block your throat when you do that. In order to take a pill, you put your chin down to your chest, and it opens up so the pill goes down. See, you got educated tonight. I'm talking about everything else. <laughs> Except that I could only, the only way to do that is to take pills with a straw. Yeah. And so, the first night I was at home, I didn't have a straw. And I dribbled all, all the way down myself. <laughs> I went through three glasses of water trying to get that first pill down. I looked like I'd been baptized. <laughs> and I'm sharing this with you because I hope they help somebody out. I lay there on that bed and I cried. I thought, Lord, I'll never be able to stick with these pills. I'll die. They told me if I come off that medication, my immune system will plummet and I'll die. The Lord said, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You know what? That's been 2007, and I have not missed a pill. I have not missed a day. Because every time I take that, I say, thank you, Lord. I'm going to be able to swallow this pill. There's not that there's been a few times it didn't work. You probably been at that point before where you thought it was down and it wasn't down. But I stayed on my pity pot long enough. Finally, I decided it was sticking, so I flushed it. Come on now. If you'll stop feeling sorry for yourself and flush your pity pot rather than just hanging on it all the time. <laughs> and begin to say, you know what? I can do this. I'm seeing with my understanding and with my spirit. And God is going to get me through this. This is just a trial. This is just a thing I'm going through. Turn to somebody and say, it's just a thing. Isn't it amazing? I had a pastor tell me, isn't it amazing how God can do something great for us and we'll come right out of a miracle and then doubt God? Uh, yeah. He'll heal us and we're feeling better and then we'll start saying, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills. 
when you begin to see with your spirit, then you know that not only is God going to supply your physical needs, God's going to supply your financial needs. Now, I believe, I want you to understand this, I believe in prosperity. I believe that the Word says that He would that you be in health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. However, I want to tell you, this is not talking about money. Come on now. Come on. This is not talking about money. If it was talking about money, then some of our people that went before us weren't living right because some of them died poor. Right. And I had a great grandmother who lived for God, hardly ever had a penny to her name. So I know that he's not talking about that you're going to be rich. Anybody who keeps telling you, can I just tell you this? You cannot buy your healing. You cannot buy your salvation. So stop spending money you don't have to send it to some TV preacher that tells you if you plant a seed in this, you're going to heal, they're going to send you a miracle. Maybe I'll sell this one to you for a dollar. And then you just stick it in the offering. I don't want it. Your salvation, your healing was already paid for. Right. When you can see this with your spirit, then whenever all these other things start to come at you, you can say, you know what? God's working this out for me. In our church, there was a time that we didn't have any kids. And you see me around here enough, you know I love kids. I've always got a kid somewhere close to me. And so, I began to prophesy and began to pray like y'all did. Lord, I thank you that the children are coming in. Yes, yes. I thank you that you're sending children. Sometimes on Sunday morning, I want to say, Lord, could I go back and ask that you send quiet children in? <laughs> <laughs> but you, we've got, got people in, in our church and, and friends in Tulsa that, 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 that the doctor said you can never have a baby. We begin to pray over those women and say, you know what? You're going to have a baby. We begin to call it forth. And it happened. I'm going to even believe God honors His Word. But you have to see it after your spirit. And sometimes when you're looking in the natural, it's not going to make any sense. I'm here to tell you that if you'll see after your spirit and you'll begin to put on the right armor, God is going to take you into something new. And you're not going to come out all beat up and all beat down. You're going to be able to come out and say, you know what? God gave me the victory in the midst. How many of you know you don't need victory in the midst of your victory? You need victory in the midst of your trouble. There's a whole lot of people going around saying, well, if it's the Lord's will. Really? Do y'all believe that it's the Lord's will to heal you? A couple of you. Yeah. All right. So, if you believe that it's the Lord's will, why would you say, Lord, if it's your will, heal me? Now, I know that there is appointed unto a man a time to live and a time to die. And I ain't afraid of God. And I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's fast. I don't want to go slow. But we have we we always make up excuses. When people can't see with their spirit, they begin to make up flesh with excuses. And I had a a gentleman come in to me and his wife was was dying and and, and, and I understood. I, I've been with people. I've had many people in my church move on to heaven. But I know it wasn't her time yet. She was only in her 40s and it wasn't that serious. And he said, he said I just know that she's dying. But he, he looked at me and he said, But Pastor, don't you think death is the ultimate healing? I said, Well, you told me you've had a sore throat for two weeks. Would you like to pray for the ultimate healing in your life? <laughs> I said, no, no, I'm not talking about it. I said, well, if it works for her, it works for you. <laughs> you need to walk away from some of that old stuff and say, you know what? I know it's God's will that I be in health and prosper. Yes. I know that it's God's will that I live a free life. Just because God wants you to prosper doesn't mean you're rolling the money. It means that you're not in need. Right. And that God is going to supply what go. you need. There you go. And you know what? We're only, I, I teach this in, in Tulsa all the time. We're not blessed to hoard the blessings. We're only blessed to be a blessing to somebody else. And this is how you know who your real friends are. Your real friends, when you get blessed, they're as happy as if they got blessed themselves. They don't go around talking about, well, I, I don't know what they did deserve that. I've been trying to do this. Uh-uh. 
real friends with, they love you enough, honey. They're happy when you get blessed. I tell people all the time, you should pray that God blesses me because I'm not stingy. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, pray that God bless because I'll give something to you too. Won't you understand? If you can see with your spirit, now I know that normally whenever I come down here, I scream and shout and run around and haven't tore anything up, but. <laughs> well. <laughs> but tonight I want you to get this simple message. I promise I'll be back next time. I'll probably scream and shout and do all this stuff. But this is what real Holy Ghost outpouring is about is it doesn't change you just for the moment. Yeah. Come on, that's right. that's right. It changes you for eternity. Yes. You're right. Yes. Absolutely. And I love the shout and I love all that, but what are you going to do tomorrow or Monday when there's nobody to shout with you? Come on now. When there's not a Hammond B3 to give you a backup. Come on. When there's nobody else to tell you that you can make it, you're going to need something that's going to help you on past right. that. You're right. And so tonight, I want you to get this, that God wants to change the way that you see things. Right. It'll change your life forever. If you can start seeing things the way that God sees them. You know what the great thing about that is? Whenever you start seeing things the way that God sees them, you'll start seeing people the way that God oh, sees them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It'll make all the difference in your life because we'd all like to say we've gotten rid of all that, but the church is probably the most judgmental place in America. Because we judge people when they don't dress right. We judge people when they don't worship like we worship. We judge people whenever they don't do this or they don't do that. It's time for that to stop. Amen. If we're going to be the house of God that God called us to be, we'll start seeing people the way that God sees them. And it means that we love people where they're at. I didn't come this week to compete with the other preachers. I love them. Not too happy that I have to preach right before Doug, but I, I love them. <laughs> but it's better than preaching after Doug. <laughs> but I'm telling you this, God wants you to see something tonight. Right. Yes, God. Yes, God. He wants you to stop looking at the way that things are right now and see things how they're going to be the way that He sees them. When Jesus looks at you, there's a song that says, He doesn't see me in all of my sin. He sees me through the blood, the cross, and the resurrection. That's how God sees you. It's time you started seeing yourself on like that. Stop looking at your past and the mistakes that you've made. We, there is not one of us, including the pastors that are here, there's not one of us in here that have never had a spirit of stupid on us. Come on. Come on. Right. As a matter of fact, the bad thing about being a pastor, sometimes it hits you in the pulpit. Right. <laughs> and we'll, we'll say things and you think, oh dear God, I hope nobody else heard that but me. Right. And you can step, tell by the smile on their faces that they did. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's no mistake that you've made that makes you unworthy of getting right. everything God has for you. Say that. Say Quit that. trying to fit in with everybody else. Quit trying to act like everybody else. Take off that armor that no longer fits you, that never fits you to begin with, and put on the clothes that God has for you. The clothes of righteousness, the clothes of peace, the clothes of joy. Put on those things that are going to lift you up. Here's what happens when you wear the wrong armor. You can't do what you're called to do because it's always weighing you down. It's too heavy for you. You're right. I tell the kids in our church all the time, don't try to measure up to somebody else. You'll always disappoint yourself. Be concerned about measuring yourself up to God. Be what He wants you to be. Don't, don't, don't try to be everybody else. There was a time in many of our lives where we tried to dress like everybody else. Come on. There were times that came in, I can remember because we both did it. We 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 had a we, we I stopped wearing mine because I discovered it made me look short. <laughs> and I don't need any help. But we had jackets that went down to our knees. And they just make me look like a sissy that's short and needs a pair of heels. <laughs> 
And so I decided I was going to stop ordering. I went to a conference that, that everybody, I, I gave all my roaches to Evelyn. But, and she was glad to get them, and I was kind of glad to get rid of them. Because usually we go to this conference, we all have these big roaches. You know, it's kind of a roach contest. You know, who could have the most bright and shiny? You're right. <laughs> Even when the Holy Ghost wasn't moving, we just... I was at a conference in Dallas. My, they didn't invite me back after that one. But I, I was at a conference and everybody had all these big roads. I couldn't find anything that matched, but so happened that the road was rough out in front of the church. And people were always losing hubcaps out there when they'd hit those pots. I can verify this story. I went out there, found me a hubcap. I went in, I washed it off in the sink. I hung it on top of my little brooch, and I went in with a big, said BMW on it. <laughs> then somebody came up and said, Does that make me a big, best masculine woman? <laughs> Took my brooch off. I saw I didn't need to look like anybody else. I don't even try to preach like anybody else. I have a bad accent. I can't preach like anybody else. But what I can do is when I begin to see things in the Spirit, Come on now. I can follow after what God's doing. And it makes it a lot easier because I'm not distracted by what other people are or are not doing. Right, right. The biggest problem in the church is most usually distractions. You're right. We went through that tonight. The enemy tried to distract you so that you couldn't receive what God had for you. Right, right. You've got to make a determination in your heart and in your spirit that you're going to see things the way that God sees them. And you're not going to back down. You're not going to be disappointed. You're not going to be intimidated. You're not going to walk in your shame. And you're not going to walk in your past. You're going to walk in it right now. We talk about it all the time. We need a right now praise. We need an anyhow praise. You need to begin to walk before God anyhow. When you're sick, you walk before God anyhow. When you're disappointed, you walk before God anyhow. Whenever you don't have any money, you walk before God just like you did whenever you had some until it comes your way. You just keep walking before God, and my God will take care of you. You know what? There comes a time where we have to start living what we preach, not just preach it all the time. And it's easy to come together in camp meetings and conferences and all this, and we all shout and we talk about the victory and we talk about all this. But we need something that will last. Not something that will just get us through today. Come on now. But something you can see with your spirit. Yes, God there are many people that don't even know that they're walking around in an old armor. I'm going to close in just a second, but I want to tell you this. Sometimes that old armor... I come from a long line of church people. But sometimes that old armor is the bondage of religion. You're right. You're right. And God is not looking for religion. He's looking for a relationship. Yes. You're right. Religion will kill you. Relationship will save you. Right. Sometimes that little armor is still trying to please somebody else that you were never able to please, you'll never be able to please, and you might as well quit trying to please people that are never going to be able to be pleased. Right. Too many times, people go through their whole life trying to please everybody else. If you learn how to please God, you'd be pleased. You'd quit trying to please everybody else. Can I just give you a really strong word from God tonight that I felt with as I close this? You're not called to be somebody else's bank. You're not called to be somebody else's babysitter. You're not called to be somebody else's therapist. You're called to encourage them to get to the next level rather than doing it all yourself. If you can begin to see that with your spirit, you'll end up make you a lot freer and you won't spend as much time trying to do stuff you're not called to do. Even pastors, a whole lot of times we spend half our life doing stuff we weren't called to do because nobody else will do it. People come to my church and say they want to work at ministry, they start by cleaning the toilets. Because you can't sing on my worship team unless you know how to clean your toilet. We got rid of some worship team members that way. <laughs> See things after your spirit and understand that God wants to bless you. To make your life fun and enjoyable. To walk in peace. To walk in integrity. To walk in wisdom. 
These are things that God already has for you. You just got to make a determination that you're going to get it. Right. And in order to do that, you're going to have to shed some of the old stuff. You're right. I'll just stand to your feet for just a moment.